Welcome back. It's Pastor Cat. This is your five minute devotional. We are still with Paul in the book of Galatians. He is writing to the churches in the region of Galatia, and they have been struggling with taking the gospel, boiling it down and living just that without having to add on Old Testament laws and practices. And so he's going to pick up that discussion again here. We're all the way over to chapter three. If you haven't been following along with the series and you want to see the first two uh, sessions of it, you can click on the note card right there and we'll leave it out for you. Now, Paul is typically not known for someone who spends a lot of time talking about the Holy Spirit. Yet, I think in this passage, you're going to see an allusion to that. And we're just going to jump right. No. No, not, not that kind of spirit. The actual Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 3, I'm going to put the passage on the screen right there so you can see it. It says this, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before the eyes of Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Now, as he asked this question, the answer is meant to be right there in the description. Clearly, they received the Holy Spirit through grace, of course, Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and their faith in that knowledge. And because of it, the idea that they would then perfect their salvation, perfect their walk through works, is very silly. Now he calls them foolish. I want to separate that away from someone who is just stupid. That's not what he's saying at all. We already found out in the last two chapters that there were people who come in and began teaching specifically that circumcision had to be added to the mighty work of Christ on the cross to lead to salvation. And Paul is really stepping in the gap there and saying that is just not the truth. And because they have followed down this path, they've actually put a block between people who need to hear the gospel in its truth and added more things to it. And he's trying very hard here to remove that flesh portion that I'm going to work out my salvation portion from the gospel itself. As we read through this, Paul calls them foolish and we go, man, we're 2,000 years away from that. We never fall in those traps. But if I'm really honest with myself, I know that there are certain things that I do, certain ways that I think, ways that I behave that would put a very high value on my actions or things that I've accomplished in my life as opposed to just belief in Christ and the faith that comes from that, that leads to salvation. Now, before we get too far into this, I think it's important to actually consider the fact that God has given us this massive blessing. And by adding things to it, we're actually taking away from the gift that is this salvation. This discussion comes up in the book of Ephesians, and that is our parallel passage for today. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. We'll put it on the screen there as well. It says this, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us before the foundations of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love. This, I believe, is fundamental to what Paul is talking about here. You see, Christ, God the Father, through Christ, has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, if you believe that your spiritual blessing is something you have worked on and that you've built up and that you deserve, then you really do have to wrestle with Ephesians chapter one because it is very clear that those spiritual blessings come not only from heaven and from the Father and through Christ and because of our faith, but not of us. And all of that happened, here's the key, all of that happened before the foundations of the earth. 
I know if you look back at my life as a child or even a few years ago, you'll see a very different understanding of who God is, who the Father is, and what my spirit life is supposed to look like. So if I am trusting in myself, my own knowledge and my own power, I'm throwing away the fact that God did it before the foundations of the earth. In some ways, that's kind of depressing that all the work that I do actually came from the Father and I'm not actually getting to take credit for it. And in other ways, it is massively freeing to realize that this is from the Father, done in heavenly places, and that all of my works really are those filthy rags that Paul talks about. And if I believe in that and I trust in that, then my failures are just that. They're my failures and God's forgiveness is enough to cover them and bring me back from any of those mistakes because it's not about me. It's about Christ's work on the cross. That's massively encouraging. I hope it's as encouraging to you as it was to me to be reminded of this once again. If you like this kind of weekly uh, spiritual encouragement, I pray that you go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Give me a quick description of what your spirit walk looks like this week so I can join in prayer with you you as you continue on the path God has set you on. Well, God bless. I'll see you next week.